Hello, I'm just in the Great Wold Valley in the Yorkshire Wells in East Yorkshire um, and I brought you here because uh, I am alongside a river known as the Gypsy Race um, although some people have told me that more locally it's known as the Gypsy Race but I shall continue to call it the Gypsy Race that's how most people know it and the Gypsy Race is uh, a seriously important river for Neolithic people. Now it's quite a strange river, it's a Winterbourne, it's the most uh, northerly chalk river in the British Isles, uh, the Yorkshire Wells of course being the most northerly ridge of chalk in Britain too. Uh, and it's a Winterbourne so uh, as the name suggests um, it is not uh, a river that is evident throughout the year but appears um, during um, uh, the winter time, during periods of heavy rainfall. And it's what people describe as quite an erratic river uh, in that it appears um, uh, just behind me um, at Duggleby and then it disappears slightly further upstream, for, uh, downstream from here. Uh, it goes underground and then it reappears again and it keeps doing this right away along its length until very suddenly it uh, dog legs down to the south um, to uh, Rudston and then it dog legs again to the east um, uh, and um, uh, heads out to Bridlington and then out to the, the North Sea. So it's quite an unusual river but as I say it's a river that is clearly of quite profound importance to Neolithic people. And we know this because they built a whole bunch of monuments alongside it. Uh, um, a number of Neolithic round mounds, um, but also um, uh, we have uh, some later henge, Neolithic henge monuments, and also uh, the Rudston monolith, and um, at Rudston there are a whole series of uh, Cursus monuments, making it um, probably one of the most important prehistoric sites outside of Wiltshire. Now I want to go and visit one of these sites and that's further upstream so I've got to face this way and head in that direction until I start getting to the springs of the Gypsy Race and there we'll find Duggleby Howe, Neolithic Round Mound. I'm just heading east upstream to the source of the Gypsy River and I've just found this part of the river is actually unfenced and a lot more uh, wild looking so obviously it's quite variable um, in terms of the way it's being managed along the length of it uh, but you can see here how heavily farmed it is and of course when you get that level of farming and ploughing over so many years you also get the destruction of the archaeology so there would have been a huge amount more and in fact some of the early archaeologists and antiquarians working in this area commented on how little of the archaeology had survived and there's much less now. Anyway the light is going so I'm going to continue on my journey. As I continue my journey up the river towards its source I'll just tell you a little bit about some of the monuments along uh, this part of the, uh, the Gypsy Race. Um, starting with uh, Duggleby Howe, which we will get to eventually, a huge uh, Neolithic round mound. We have other round mounds such as Willy Howe and uh, Wald Newton. Um, now these, uh, these mounds have been the um, focus of a, a dating project more recently, showing that they date to somewhere in the um, sort of around 3500 BC, um, some a little earlier, some later, um, and continuing through to around 3000 BC. So these uh, Neolithic round mounds seem to be uh, burial mounds, so very unlike the large monumental mounds that we find down in Wiltshire, Silbury Hill and Marlborough Mound for example and some of them contain multiple burials. So um, Wald Newton, for example, um, seems to have had a, a, a mortuary structure originally with several um, inhumations placed in them uh, and uh, burial um, artefacts uh, and quite possibly they were left to decompose within this structure before being 
covered uh, in a mound. So Willie Howe, one of the one of these round mounds alongside the Gypsy Race, is the largest in the Yorkshire Wolds. It's something in the region of uh, 15 metres high at the highest point. Once again, it's been excavated into by various antiquarians in the past. Um, but uh, it, in, in a similar way to Duggleby and to Wald Newton, it seems to have been uh, used as a, as a burial mound. There are several local legends about uh, Willie Howe, one of which being that if you run nine times round it without stopping and then putting your ear against the earth, you'll hear fairies singing and dancing inside it. There are all sorts of other wonderful stories about these various mounds um, that uh, one of them uh, dates right the way back to the medieval period and describes a horseman passing Wild Newton and seeing a door open in the side and in it he could see people feasting at a table so he reached in and, and took a cup and rode off before they could catch him and that may well hint at perhaps um, a, a Neolithic cup having been excavated from uh, within the mound at some point or dug out of the mound at some point in the past. Okay, so we've arrived at the very head of the Gypsy Race now here at Duggleby. This is where the river first emerges from the ground. And here we have at the very head, Duggleby Howe, one of the most famous Neolithic burial mounds in the country. It is around about uh, six meters high, although it's significantly eroded. Um, so it would have been uh, larger and um, it is surrounded by a um, huge causewayed ditch, uh, which remains undated. Is it a causewayed enclosure or is it more of a, a henge monument type feature? We simply don't know that until um, some trenches go in and we get some good dating from it. But the mound itself has been excavated. It's been excavated by a number of antiquarians in the past uh, and it's relatively well dated. The sequence here, starts with a burial pit in which um, a number of inhumations are placed one on top of the other and then the mound is constructed and then more burials are placed on top of that so we have this sort of stack of human remains inside this mound and underneath this mound now this uh th th this um these burials date from the very beginning of the Middle Neolithic, so from around 3500 BC, uh, perhaps a smidge earlier than that. Amongst the grave goods within Duggleby Howe um, were a, a number of boar's tusks, um, but also a series of um, uh, uh, stone um, uh, maces and, and, and an antler mace as well. One of the really interesting features of the burials from Duggleby Howe is that some of them um, clearly show evidence for um, trauma to their skulls, which is probably what caused their death. In fact, some of them have two opposing holes on their skulls, almost as if the head has been placed on a on a hard stone of some sort and then hit with a with a club or another stone, um, uh, smashing the skull on both sides. Um, so you know, it just highlights how um, awful at times the Neolithic was. I mean, it's easy to think back to this period as some sort of um, wonderful idyllic time um but but we forget of the the violence that went on um and here in this mound you we have evidence of that so here's just another view of uh duggleby howe um there you go the village of duggleby and the start of the gypsy race and now the light is fading and I need to get home for tea, so I shall sign off.